What's up guys? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. And we're out here in the freezing cold today. Because, you know, we're going to uh, work on mom's car again. And today, there are a couple of things we are doing. I'm here at my in-laws. I'm using the garage to kind of, you know, kind of keep me out of the windy cold. And First off, we're going to do an oil change again. Um, it was about six months ago that I did the oil in this car. We're doing it now because it still has sea foam in it. I put sea foam in it. Um, the this is the second time it's had sea foam in it, and we're gonna drain it out. I don't have sea foam with me today, so we're just gonna put regular oil back in. But this oil only has about 700 and some miles on it this time. The last time we did it, it was 900 miles. So we're cutting it down a little bit, just because it's been in there for about six months or so. So we're gonna see what you know, 700 mile oil looks like, and uh, just kind of see how well the sea of home's working there. And the other thing we're doing is we have the taillight issue yet again, and um, we're gonna go a little further with it this time, and I'll kind of go into that once we do this oil change. So this oil change obviously isn't gonna take too long on this car, it's actually really quick. Um, and then once we do that, we'll have to uh, go into the whole taillight situation all over again and we're gonna go from there so let's go ahead and get this car up on the ramps and let's drain the oil out of it so if I mess this up if it goes over it's gonna be documented <laughs> oh, I, it's okay it'll make for good views Lord, I pray Jesus mom won't be too happy but <laughs> it'll, make for good, it'll make for good Yeah, this one here. This one here is that one's short. This one here is short. Do I have to give up a little on that side? Yeah, that's fine. 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 Yeah, work under a car with no jack stands when using a jack. Man, that just made it to the uh, garage door too. Oh yeah, oh, I didn't think about that. Ooh, <laughs> it's all good. All right, so first things first. Does she have plenty of fluid here? It looks like I can. It kind of fogged up or something. Like that. Oh yeah, it's old. Ooh, we got foam again. I wonder if that's from the sea foam. I don't like that, but. That's, oh, that's a 2.2. Yep. So we'll leave that it's off. Good. It's been good. Other than the fact that it's, you know, older and it's burning oil, and which is why the sea foam's in there, because uh, our mechanic said the timing components and stuff, you know, if it's losing oil, obviously the timing chain and the guides and stuff don't get lubricated enough, so the sea foam's a, supposed to help it. Is that a chain? That is, is a chain? chain, yeah. I do believe it's a chain. All right, so let's crawl underneath and get this oil out. Oh, what's the mileage on it? It was, uh, let's see, we're almost at 105,000 miles. 733 miles on the oil. So, we'll see what that looks like, what the oil looks like after 700. And, yeah, that's good. 733 miles. Having this ramp is pretty nice. I have a lot of room under here. Let's see if we were right about it being a 15. Thank you. This transmission line is leaking again. You've got to be kidding me. What's wrong? This is the second time that it's been fixed, this transmission cooler line. Oh, man. It's leaking all over again. Oh, yeah, 15. You're right. All right, here we go. Okay? Yep. And 
Oh, it's very hot. Oh, there we go. That's pretty black for 700 miles. Where's oh. the rag at? Oh. It's very watery. That's good, thank you. Yeah, that's very black for 700. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, that's seafoam. That seafoam oh. does wonders, man. Huh. Look at that. And so, yeah, we're going to have to check, get this done again. That's... Because the line blew out again oh. a couple months ago, and he fixed it again. Because uh -huh. the, clam the clamps that he was using, he said uh, they were um, defective because he was getting other complaints and they all had the same uh, reason. That's where it's leaking from too are these clamps so he's gonna probably have to do something else. It's just about done already. Alright so while that's doing that let's take the filter off. Okay so as in uh, you know GM tradition because uh, it's never entirely 100% easy the filters back Right there, so we have to take off the air snorkel, which means you have to undo the wiring harness there. Just kind of tuck it in there. It won't go anywhere, but yeah, right there is good. And then we got to take this off. It makes it a lot easier. Oh, I was supposed to replace the air filter in this too this time, but. I didn't buy an air filter, so we'll we'll just do that maybe in a couple days or so. Right. Now we can get to the filter easier with your special GM socket. There we go. Yeah, this one, it's a 32, oops, I think it's tight up there still. It's a 32 millimeter, but it's like specially designed to fit by, by the uh, intake. Yeah. All right, and there's our filter, so. I think I'm gonna put the plug in and then that way we'll let that go into the basin. Wow, it's still dripping. Probably because the car slanted upward. Oh, you know what? When I took the filter off, maybe it, it undid some more yeah. suction or something. Yeah. Cause yeah. yeah. That yellow goop. Oh. That wasn't on there last time. So I don't know if it's because of the seafoam being in there and maybe it's like watery and moistury. I don't know. Hopefully we're not losing, uh, you know, coolant or anything. The bottle's old. She does need a coolant flush or change. That's still the original Dex cool in there, which I'm obviously not a fan of when it comes to the gaskets from this time period. Yeah, look at this. When I put sea foam in here last time, mm -hmm. I spilled it on here by accident. And I took a rag. Look at how look at how nice all that cleaned up. Wow! It cleaned up real nice. So I can just imagine what. When it goes to the inside. Yeah. Well, other than the fact that the transmission line's leaking again, I don't see anything else that's out of the ordinary. Did they fix it? Did you have someone fix that, or did you fix it? No, I I had our our guy that we've been going to for years fix it. Oh. I was wondering why it looked kind of wet under here when I first got under, and I was like, nah. And then I look at that line, and it's like, it's dripping right off the line, so it's... Huh. <sighs> yeah, ain't, it, ain't it grand? All right, I'm plugging this thing back up. I already checked the plug, as you can see. It's all wiped off. The seal on it is still in really good shape. So we're just going to get rid of this. You know, it's we're done. <laughs> There we go. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. And look at that. I did not leave any mess in your in your garage. <laughs> you need some more paper towels? No, we're good. All right, so that's all plugged up and tightened. All right, okay. Here's our filter. Wow. It doesn't look as chewed up, so that's good. It's just all obviously dingy from, you know, Even the seal on this doesn't look that bad. Oh. Okay, it's on the ground. <laughs> Very important to put the new seal on this all the time. First, you want to wipe it down. Then you want to put your new seal on. Again, very important. Even though the other seal wasn't that old, uh, so I, you always want to use the new one and make sure it, it lines up all the way to the top where that last groove is. Then you can take your new filter. That's it. I know I've said that a million times on this video, on these videos, but it never hurts to uh, be reminded. Make it so easy to wipe this down. It looks like it cleans up really well in there, amazingly. Look at that. Here we go. The vertical mine's up and down. Well, it's pretty much the mine's like, I mean, mine's all that around. Mm. And it should kind of thread in there really easy. If it doesn't, then hopefully you know they're not getting cross-threaded. And again, it'll stop. Just give it maybe a couple more nudges. And that's pretty much it. Now we get to put the air snorkel back on. Thank you, sir. Doesn't help that the air box is rusted out, so oh, it moves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it gets a lot of play in it. And don't forget your sensor. Okay, now we're ready to add the oil. Really well. I'm gonna wipe that off so I can keep an eye on that. I don't like that, that makes me nervous. That's what I would find under the oil cap of the, oh. the Alero and the Aztec when the ga head gaskets were going. I didn't take gaskets. Oh. So uh, even though the car is on the jacks or the ramps, um, I'm going to put all of the five quarts in anyway. That should be, you know, obviously the uh, appropriate level. And as usual, we are using the conventional 5W30 as recommended per GM for this particular engine. And away she goes. All right, so Maybe everything, what's that? Maybe a little bit more. Yeah. 
Oil's in, plugs in, filters in, cap is on, dipstick's down, sensor's hooked up, air snorkel's on. I think it's time we start it up. Reset this to zero. Pressure's up. Sound good? No leaks. All right, I think it's time we get it off the ramps. So now that the oil has changed and it's running good and it sounds good, I'm going to show you guys real quick what else we're dealing with. So as you can see, the headlights are on. And if you watched this video a couple of uh, vlogs ago, you'll see that we have the right tail lamp is working with the regular lights. The left side, we get nothing. And what happened is years ago, water got into this tail light and it completely corroded the uh, circuit panel where all of the bulbs go into. So I ordered a new circuit panel uh, a couple weeks ago. I put it in, but when we took the, uh, the old circuit panel out and after we disconnected it, the wiring harness was also corroded and one of the pins had actually broke off of the circuit board and got stuck in the uh, harness. So I have a feeling that's why this isn't working. So. Um, I tried to twist the lights when I put them back on and it got it working but as you can see it's not working again. Now everything else is functional. Um, the, as you can see the turn signal light is working just fine and uh, when you step on the brakes uh, you'll see that the brake light will illuminate just fine. And the reverse light was burnt out, but I think somebody else put a bulb in for her at that time. But um, So as you can see, we just don't have lights working back here in the norm. And I, I'm really afraid this one's going to go next. I do not want to deal with this issue again. So what we did, and this is going to be the final straw for me, <laughs> but we went to the junkyard and I cut off the harness from another Malibu of this generation. Actually, it was the exact same color. But this one, after looking at several of them at the yard, this is the only one that looks like it has not been affected by water in any way. It looks brand new. There's no corrosion in there. So, yeah. So that's what we got to deal with now. Uh, so obviously, I'm going to have to cut this tape off, I'm going to have to cut some of the wiring skin off, and then we have to splice it once we take all this back off, we're going to have to splice this onto the existing wiring harness, and this is going to be a little bit time consuming, um, and hopefully you know I get this right this time, because if I botch this, then we're going to be in a lot of trouble, so I'm probably going to go back in their house for a little bit start cutting this off get the wires uh, shaved down a little bit then I'll come back out here and we're gonna we're going to disassemble that all over again which is no big deal it's actually really easy to take off and such but I'm just tired of dealing with this issue and uh, we're going to hopefully fix it for the last time so let's do this so here we are again with this tail light So, getting the whole light assembly off is not the issue that we're dealing with here. This is actually pretty easy. You just twist all of these little wing nuts. 
three total. And then, there we go. So this part here is what we have replaced uh, because of the water corroding the terminals and such. To get that off, and this is pretty tricky, especially with one hand, there's four clips, two on the top. These will break really easily. There we go. Maybe we can get the bottom ones off there. Thank you. I think we're good. Nope, one more. Oh, it's off. There. Okay. So this whole panel here is brand new, but the issue that I was finding again was with when you, when we take this off, you're gonna see how corroded it is. It is badly corroded. And yeah, somebody did put a new bulb in there, so we should have a reverse light. So let me get that screwdriver and I'll have to pry that off. So on the bottom. There's this little prong here. Just kind of put the screwdriver through it, lifts it up, and then I just try to wiggle it out of there. Just like that. Now as we can see, all five, uh, all five prongs are still in there, so that's good. So this is still good. <laughs> but if we look at the uh, actual harness, you can see where... Um, it was corroded. I put Vaseline on here when I put it back together, kind of hoping maybe it would it would help it. But you can see this wide one right here, where it looks like that hole is open. The old one of the old prongs broke off in there, and I had to try to pick it out. So I don't know if maybe that's where this situation got bad or what. But now I'm basically just going to cut this one off, and we're going to splice this one. Uh, back on and as you can see this one is it looks like it's brand new like it might have already been changed at one time So we should not have any issues with this whatsoever Just as long as I can get it uh, spliced in a really really good manner Fingers crossed yes, Lord, help. Now I'm actually just gonna cut this off right here at the end because obviously I don't have enough wire to work with. It tucks into the back of the bumper pretty good into the actual main harness for the entire back of the car. So we're just gonna cut it off maybe right about here. That's it, there's no going back now. <laughs> this is it, so there's no going back. <clears throat> now another hard thing that we're gonna run into is I have to try to unravel some of this tape and uh, the other one was pretty easy. Uh, this one, I don't really want to do this because I don't want to end up cutting these wires, but I might just try to wiggle it through here. Yeah, a little bit, there we go. Maybe not. I'm going to try not to leave a bunch of stuff in your driveway. <laughs> no, you're fine. Okay, so I'll try to get it like maybe down here. I'm going to end up taping all this back up anyway, so. It's like really stale tape. Like you can tell it's a lot of it's been on here for so long. That's pretty good. Got room to spread them out. Okay, so it looks just like the other one. Obviously, all the wire colors are the same. We've got one solid blue one. We've got a solid blue, well, we got a solid blue, a blue with a black stripe, one green, one black, and another black. The two blacks are different in size. This one here, these are thicker, so we know. So we got the same wire and colors, that's good. So from here, it really shouldn't be that difficult. Um, just trying to keep enough room 
to splice these all together because what we're doing is we're just going to electrical tape them together and then we'll just wrap tape all the way back up this uh, harness again like like it is here so I just want to make sure that we have enough wire to twist these together because as you can see if I mess up we're we don't have much to work with so that's why this is this is a very crucial project I hate it when when we have to do stuff like this <laughs> tearing apart that front fender was more fun than doing this and that was a nightmare in itself to be honest with you okay one wire these wires are thin uh, four out of these five wires are very thin so I, I'm trying to be really careful mm -hmm. trying to cut these skins off yeah. because if we cut too much obviously we are going to cut off some of the wire and I don't want to do that plus this hurts my knees do you have a cardboard thing yep up oh, there we go okay two down three to go but this one hopefully will be okay I did end up cutting looks like two pieces of the wire off that's in this this little skin so hopefully oh thank you hopefully we will not have an issue with that because then again I'll have to cut that wire even lower uh, hopefully two pieces of that gone will not will not really affect that I, I really hope trying to get number four off it's cut it's on its way I think I don't want to have to do this, but I'll try to slide it off. Oh, there it is. Okay, I thought it flew away. Oh, we're good. The wire cameras are okay. I'm good. Yeah, we're good so far. And last oh, one. Yeah, but they kept the wires up. Mm -hmm. The one blue one I I pulled out too. Oh, two fibers. It's pretty hard to shut them. I know. I really hope it's not going to make a difference. I got it. Number five. All right. So. All of our wires are now cut. I'm trying to keep them separated at least. Keep them together. Now we have to match them up. Oh, one thing I should advise is maybe I should have disconnected the battery of the car. But I don't see it being a problem because obviously the lights are not on. The, the brake lights aren't being pushed. So no power should be going to these at all. So, I mean, if you want to play it safe, you could do the battery. I didn't. I'm still here. <laughs> all right. So now that we got all these untied, like un, you know, skinned, I guess. Um, I think we're just gonna start tying them together. So I tried to cut enough so I can have room to tie. And twist. Twist and twist. All right. So now so we'll try to do the green one since that's the next one or in line here. So thin. Okay, that one's tied up perfectly. The next one is going to be the blue with the black stripe, which is right here. I get the bottoms to end up. You need some more 
I'm good for now, I think. Yeah, thank you. Oh, this one's not twisting well. Oh, wait, there we go. All right, four out of the five. And last but not least, the plain blue. All right. So now they are all connected. They seem like they're connected pretty well if I can move them like that. And now I'm going to just try to tape up each individual set and hope that they don't come undone. And the battery's dying, oh no. So I'm just gonna finish this up and I'll put the camera back on once we hook everything back up for its very first test and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're all taped up. I really hope this battery doesn't die. We're all taped up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this back on right now to make sure that everything is working before I actually tie or tape all of these wires up together. So this is going to be the first and hopefully the final test with this. So, brand new thing here. Okay, it's in. These are all sitting there. Alright, so the, the most obvious thing was the uh, headlights not working, or the taillights when the, the car is, you know, running, so. Oh, it's upside down, but we're okay. <laughs> I got scared for a second. Alright, so those are the taillights, we're good. Yeah, the taillights are working now. I'm gonna hit the brake. Brake lights? Well, when's the bottom one supposed to work? Well, the, the ones that are lit up are the bottom ones. I have it upside down. When, when are the top ones supposed to work? We're gonna find out here in a second. So oh. I see the lights look like they're working. Yeah, they're working. Turn signal? Yep. Okay, last but not least. Reverse? Yep, yep. Good job, good job, uh oh, good job, but this started to move a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. Alright, now we'll tape it back up and put it together and hope it still works after this. Are you done with this, you think? It's all back together? Yeah, we're good. That's it. Done. Alright guys, and that should be it. The tail light issue with the Malibu Classic is done. Um, other than bulbs occasionally burning out over time, that should be the only thing wrong with that side of the car uh, in the back. Um, now with the the replacement harness and I honestly had a feeling I was gonna have to replace that especially once the, the other one was just looking so corroded um, and I, I had a feeling that's what it was gonna come down to um, so yeah that's what we did we also got the oil changed no sea foam this time so I'll see how the car runs and uh, how the oil level looks without the sea foam but that's it so this has been another Malibu classic vlog and uh, Hopefully it was entertaining. I'm just glad that we got that issue solved. And hopefully I don't have to do it to the other side. So, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, check out Mike's Vehicle Spotlight, which is the official vehicle touring segment posted on this channel. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Take care. I hope my battery doesn't die. I just keep stopping and making weird faces while well, we're trying to see if we have electrical caps maybe that I can use. So I'm just waiting here. That's filthy. I'll have to take the lights off next time to clean this. Ugh.